Today we continue our uh, discussions on the bell drives. This is lecture number 31. Now, in the last class, uh, we started with the bell drives. So, just to recapitulate very quickly, uh, we started with the belt material. Now, normally for the bell drives, uh, leather, rubber, plastic and fabric are the materials which are most commonly used for the manufacturing of the belts. Now, in the leather bell material, you are having you can see the oak tent and the chrome tent type of leathers are available. In the rubber basically what happens a canvas or cotton duct impregnated with rubber. This is the construction of the rubber bells. Plastic bells as it was told it consists of a thin plastic sheet with a rubber layer and which could be uh, having more number of plies. What is the number of plies means the number of layers of such plastic belts if it put it in uh, one after the other then we call this as the ply. And last one we consider as the canvas or the oven cotton ducts. So, these are called the fabric belts which are normally used for uh, very temporary and short period belt operations. So, this was the uh, place where we stopped in the last class. So, if we continue the first thing is that typical bell drive specifications. What we understand by typical bell drive specifications? Now, normally what happens that whenever you are designing a belt, then the most important part is the material. The decision of the material you are using for a belt depends of course, onto the service. So, depending upon the different services a different types of materials are being used. Then you can see the point number of ply. So, what is the number of ply as I told you the what is the total number of plies that with which the belt is made up. So, that the cross sectional thickness will depend upon the number of ply you are using in a belt. Maximum belt stress per unit width. So, what this means? This means that the belt is always in tension as you know. So, what is the capability of belt to withstand a tensile stress is what is the maximum belt stress per unit width. Why per unit width? Because from the earlier three points one has already taken a decision roughly that we should use for this particular purpose this type of thickness although the final thickness will come into picture later on. But somehow or other uh, it is as because all design procedures are little iterative in nature no one has to think of at the initial a starting point. So, uh, only thing that depending upon the total tensile strength which will be calculated depending upon the design situation depending on that particular tensile strength one has to select for the thickness because the stress if you know multiply by area gives you the total tension. So, out of that if we fix the thickness at the beginning then width becomes a variable. So, normally it is recommended that the bell stresses are being given as per width. But this situation also may change sometimes what happens you know that uh, instead of such specification per width one also can find out in design data book the stresses coming onto the belt are just given in terms of power means Newton per millimeter square. So, as I told you in the design it will be normally given as MPA that means it will be Newton per millimeter square. So, if you directly get the stress value then uh, if you just multiply it by the cross sectional area then you get the total stress. So, in both the ways a belt 
strength is specified. So, next comes that the density of the belt material and coefficient of friction for a given belt material. Now, once again just I will uh, give uh, a discussion at, at different speeds and for a specific specified speed. Okay. Uh, what this means? This particular situation means that depending upon the belt speed, the tensile strengths also vary. So, what happens that the chart normally provided for design gives you the strengths at varied speeds or it can give the strength at a given speed and you have to incorporate what are the factors uh, you have to incorporate the actual strength through a factor. So, that is the reason at different speeds and for a specified speed are the two terminologies normally used. So, uh, now I suppose that you understand that this could be the chart for the stresses either for this situation at different speeds. So, you do not have to do any corrections or incorporate any corrections for a specified speed means you have to incorporate a correction. Density of the belt material is very much required and in this particular case I would like to say the density of the belt material are normally provided per unit length per unit cross section. That means, for a given cross section for an 1 meter of belt length in SI units what is the weight of the belt material that way the density of the belt material is normally specified. The density of the belt material specification is required because you have to compute in the basic equation the centrifugal force arising due to the rotation of the total belt. Coefficient of friction as you know will be again required in the basic equation and this coefficient of friction obviously depends on two situations. One is a belt material, another is a pulley material. Say pulley material is cast iron and the belt material is leather. So, there will be a coefficient of friction stated for leather and cast iron. And similar the situations will be varying whenever materials of the pulley or the belt will change. Next, we come down to the same ideas what I have just discussed, the modification of belt tension. When maximum belt stress per unit width is given for a specific or specified speed, then what happens in that case you require to go for a correction factor which is uh, we have defined as C speed to modify the belt tension and when it is operating at other than the specified one. So, just which one I just told you is being given over here in written. Another important factor is that what we call is the angle of wrap is less than 180. See normally for a belt if we look to the situation that is this is a pulley and if we are having a belt like this, this is your 180, this alpha value you know this from here to here this is we called as an alpha angle of So, this is normally all the design values given in the design handbook are based on 180 degree. However, this 180 degree will be maintained when the both the driven and the driving pulleys are the same in diameter. However, if one is larger than the other, then obviously you have seen in the earlier figures what we discussed that the angle of wrap onto the smaller one or the smaller pulley will be less than 180. So, if it is less than 180 then you understand that 
the contact area between the belt and the pulley decreases thereby the power transmission capacity will be changing will be decreasing accordingly depend from what we get at 180 degree angle of wrap. So, thereby what happens that a reduction in the belt strength is to be considered. Now, a very rough guideline although you might be getting the exact values uh, for this, uh, this reduction, but normally as in thumb rule one can think of that the belt stress to be reduced by 3 percent for each lesser angle of wrap or specified in handbook as by factor C w. Uh, is, I think uh, this is what it was covering for each you know for each 10 degree. Okay? <coughs> that means, if it is 3 percent less for each 10 degree. So, if it is 170 degree then how much you get you reduce the strength by 3 percent. If it is 160 degree then you reduce the strength by 6 percent and so on so forth you can get this particular angle of uh, angle of wrap factor which we are considering over here as C w. So, uh, what we have learned in these two slides that the specifications how it is given in a design data book. That means, one has to know the material, one has to know the bell stress per unit width or what I told you that in certain cases the things becomes very simple that directly considering all these aspects of uh, you know 1 degree wrap angle or different speeds a gross value of the belt stress may be considered. Say for example, a gross value of belt stress for a leather material can be taken as 2 MPa, 2 mega Pascals means I just write down. So, that is something like 2 MPa. So, this is something an average type of situation. So, you can take the so same thing if you are considering for leather belt then the value will be coming out to be something around 1.5 or so. Okay. So, this are also well utilized in design uh, to consider the belt stress. So, other situations uh, uh, requirement for belt drive design is the uh, you know the belt density and the belt and the pulley between the belt and the pulley what is the coefficient of friction. Now, selection of flat belt, how we consider the selection of flat belt will be discussed in this particular slide. Now, normally what happens that belt drive transmission ratio or the transmission ratio of the flat belt drives is normally limited to around 1 is to 5. Next thing is that although it is uh, it is there I instead of this number point number 2 I go down to the point number 3 the center distance is dependent on available space. Well, this is true that center distance is dependent on available space. So, you have to compromise over the space availability, but one important thing you should remember normally for the flat belt drive uh, practically there is not much of a limitations of the center distance. However, that does not say that you put an infinite center distances. Okay. Uh, normally, uh, it depends relatively on the experience, but uh, some more rather than a situation like that, that center distance something around twice the sum of the two pulley diameters is all right. Okay. It could be little higher, uh, normally it should not be lower than that and that factor 2 can also vary. Well, 
all these statements suggest that I am not giving you a definite value. The reason is that the first statement what I made you the really there is no limit for the center distance. But you know if you are having a very large belt in the belt flat ring and uh, due to the weight of the belt the centrifugal forces. So, that those are certain aspects that are necessarily one should not go up for a very very large center distances. Again at the same time if you are making the center distances too small then what is happening the flexing of the belts will take place very rapidly thereby some amount of belt life uh, will be lost. So, some compromise depending on the experience space availability now is a guideline for selecting the center distance. But you should remember that uh, normally for a starting point thus d l plus d s into 2 that means, uh, twice the sum of 2 pulley diameters little over that is quite good. But the situation will change of course, for other type of bail drive we will come down to those points. Now, the choice of belt material depends on type of service that I have already told. Belt specifications are obtained from handbook. So, what you get from the handbook I have already dealt up in the earlier slide. So, uh, de depending upon the different kinds of handbooks all handbooks will not give you in the similar manner there will be some changes. But however, what I mean to say those basic parameters are more or less specified in all the handbooks of design handbook of design and uh, from which you will get the initial guideline as far as the belt stresses are concerned. Because our primary design objective is what? The primary design objective although we will be seeing after some time still I am just telling you is the uh, belt should not fail in operation. Okay, so, that thereby the stress value is very important and other situations like belt length which is also very important. One of the vital factors I think I have told you in the last class is the this flat belt are not endless means it has to be joined. So, a proper care should be taken while joining these two belts at that interfaces. Well, coming down to the second point in the slide what you see that depending on driving shaft speed driven shaft speed pulley diameters are to be calculated and selected from available standard sizes. This means that all the pulley drives what you are going to design have a specific idea means what is happening that what is the prime mover? Suppose it is the electrical machines. So, electrical machines will be um, operating at a certain speed say uh, standard three phase induction motor speed will be around 1440 rpm, 1450 rpm like that. So, that will be your uh, this driving pulley shaft speed. However, the other one the driven one will be the actual one which will be running a uh, machine element something say a pump or a, a, a machinery it will be running not as a, a machinery it will run say a pump or a some grinding floor grinding means uh, you, you find in, in standard shops okay, or a art rock crusher whatever may be. So, th it has got another speed. So, what happens that you have to design the pulley diameters accordingly. So, that the speed of the driving and the driven uh, shaft are as per your requirement. Now, that you know will be uh, can be conveniently found out from the relations of the speed ratio or the velocity ratios etcetera. Now, here I would like to say that normally all the pulley I mean the uh, bell drives will have a certain amount of slip present in this case. What is the amount of slip? We have seen that amount of slip will be roughly around 3 percent. However, uh, if the value of slip is not given which is normally 
the fact that in all designs you do not know the sleep a priori. Okay, in that particular case what happens that as because the sleep amount is not going to change your pulley dimension to that extent, uh, people may ignore the sleep at the beginning. Well, uh, why this statement I am making? Because you can see that after you calculate a dimension then what happens that that dimension calculated a dimension as a matter of fact may not be as per the standard size. Okay? So, it will be always economical that you choose the pulley from the standard uh, size or the stock of standard sizes available in the market otherwise economically it will not be viable. I mean the, it will be more costly if you try to manufacture each and every time the pulleys as per your need. So, once you find out the standard sizes, you will be always finding out the exact speed ratio that what you wanted to conform to may be differing slightly. Well, so that is the thing that slight difference uh, in the speed ratios or the velocity ratios could take care of your slip situations. Okay? If it is given fine, but otherwise you can just simply ignore the slip. The reason is that it is not a very great amount. So, and it will be taken care of during this adjustments of the dimensions and other things. Okay? So, the coming down to this particular idea once again I read it that depending on driving shaft speed, driven shaft speed, pulley diameters are to be calculated and selected from available standard sizes. This point is clear to you. Now, I come down to the fourth point that the belt, spoot, belt speed should be within 15 to 24 meters per second. This is from that experience and that, uh, that some calculations that it has been found out that for a flat belt drive, a uh, good speed is something which should be lying between 15 to 24 meters per second say 20 meters per second. Okay? We, we just taken some average value. So, that what is the idea that you consider designing the designing means sorry the computing the diameters of the pulley taking a velocity in your mind say 20 meters per second. Then you calculate the pulley diameters and then adjust the pulley diameters to the standard sizes again recalculate what is the new belt speed because this belt speed is an important parameter uh, which will be useful for what you understand useful for finding out the belt stresses as I noted appointed you earlier and depending upon the belt speeds as a matter of fact the stresses in the belts will be changing. Now, last two points are already uh, clear to you. The choice of belt material depends on type of service and belt specifications are obtained from handbook. Now, we come down to the this particular concept of selection of flat belt. Now, first of all, you are going to design the flat, the belt drives depending upon a design power. What is that one? You ought to transmit certain amount of power through the belt drive, that is your objective. Now, what happens? that depending upon the service conditions. What are the service conditions? Means a uh, machinery may run for only 2 hours a day, a machinery can run only for 24 hours a day, a machinery can run uh, in a very clean environment, a machinery can run in a very rough environment. So, depending upon all those, all these situations what happens? The effect comes onto the belt stress and thereby the belt life. So, certain service factors are 
always given in the design handbooks. Roughly it is classified as a light shock medium, light duty, medium duty and then heavy duty and one could be like that um, a continuous operation, one could be a shock operation like that. So, are under these categories you will be finding out that different types of service factors are recommended. Now, from the given handbook uh, you can find out that what could be the appropriate service factor for your use. As a matter of fact, the space uh, and the time do not permit here to reproduce all the uh, service factors that are listed in the design handbook. However, a rough guideline uh, could be something like that. You just see it is given in blue color that is it is the service factor is normally 1.1 to 1.8 for light to heavy shock loads. Well, this is a guideline. Okay. So, if you want to be very conservative you can just straight away take 1.8, but that will be actually uh, that actually it will not be very economic for you in that particular case because conservative designs are always too costly. Okay. So, design power P design is given as service factor multiplied by required power. Required power means the power which you intend to transmit. Now, from basic equations design power is given as P design equals to B into T into etcetera, etcetera what it is given over here. Now, I think uh, for this expression I will uh, give you a brief idea, so that uh, you can understand the genesis of this equation. This equation is simply from two fundamental equations what we have derived in the last class. Well, uh, what you can see is that you know what will be the power? Power P will be given as T1 minus T2 into V. What is V? V is the bell speed and T1 uh, and T2 are the bell tensions. So, unit Newton into meter per second. So, Newton meter per second. So, this is effectively is the watt or power. So, once you get this T1 minus T2 into V is the power. So, here why what we have used this power is actually your design power okay, that you understand by multiplying by service factor. Now, out of this if we can replace T1 by means some means then our problem is solved. You know very well T1 minus m v square by T2 minus m v square equals to e to the power mu alpha. What is this one? Mu is the coefficient of friction as you know and alpha is the angle of ramp. Okay. Now, which alpha you should take for the larger pulley or for the smaller pulley? Now, you understand if the pulley material and the belt material of course, the same belt is running. If the pulley materials are the same, then what will happen that the product of mu into alpha will be lower for which one for the smaller pulley. So, normally for all situations smaller pulley is the guiding pulley that means all the designs are based on the smaller pulley because the power transmission capacity on the smaller pulley will be smaller than what you will be obtaining if you have considered the larger pulley. So, you understand that the guiding feature will be e to the power mu alpha for the smaller pulley and the value of mu alpha should be expressed in radians that you should be 
keeping in your mind. Well, so from this equation uh, you can get the value of t. Okay. Now, uh, what is happening? I think I have mentioned about this m. See, this m is basically what? It is the weight of the belt material per unit length per unit cross section. So, if we look into this particular equation, then what is v square? The v square we know the it will be coming out to be meter square per second square. So, we multiply it by kg per meter cube and we multiply into meter square. What is meter square? The meter square stands as B into T. What is B into T? The width into thickness. So, meter square gets you this, uh, this particular meter cube and this cancels. Okay? So, you are having kg meter per second square or this is equivalent to your unit Newton. So, once you substitute this particular one in this value, so this is this is very important just to look into the uh, what you call the unit point, unit part. So, uh, once you are satisfied with the unit, this is coming out with the same unit. So, we will be putting these values accordingly. So, what we will be putting? We will be putting B T and K G per minute multiplied by rho. Okay? This is the expression for this one. So, once you are substituting T 2, then entire expression comes out to be what? T 1 minus a function of T 1 and other parameters. So, you can and sorry, I put this bracket and multiplied by V. So, once you get this one, you take this T 1 common. So, what is coming out to be T 1 multiplied by all these things which is coming over here. Now, this T 1 is basically is what? The maximum bell stress. Now, this maximum bell stress is an allowable stress in the belt multiplied by its cross sectional area, is not it? So, we replace T 1 by this particular value and allowable stress into B into T. How you take the allowable stress? Either a simple way either you take uh, something around 2 or 1.5 or 1.6 as I told you or you can consider this particular sigma a from the design data book per unit uh, uh, well per unit length and unit cross section these values will be given. Anyway, you can you are, you are in a position to know this particular value. So, if we come down uh, this particular expression if we put it in the proper manner well, I have given you this ideas. Then what we get? We get uh, okay. We get this equation P design equals to B T. That you can see B T. We have taken it out. So in this case, if when you have taken this B T taken you have out, then this sigma dash P rho V square into V V. Now, you can see once again uh, we have used this sigma dash. This sigma dash parameter as I told you is actually specified value modified by a speed factor and modified by the angle of wrap factor. In certain cases you require this equation or you can get a value directly. So, if you get this one, then obviously, uh, is much more better that no other corrections are required for that matter. So, this is the design equation. So, what you get from this design equation? You see, you know this value from the design data book, you know this value from the design data book. This is your choice of the speed, what should be the choice of your speed? say roughly 20 meters per second. 
and this thing you are getting 1 from the material property and alpha this alpha from the geometrical property. So, all these things are known to you. So, what is unknown you do not know the value of B t. So, once you can set this particular value of B t from this equation then what you get? You get the cross sectional area. Now, once the cross sectional area if you have obtained then a choice of what should be the typical width and thickness could be different combinations. And you see that from the standard availability in the market what should be the width and what should be the thickness. A compromise between a uh, it should not be very thin and very wide because the more you make the wide then what will be happening you know uh, the pulley has to be the mat pulley materials will be more because you have to ma make a larger pulley width. Okay. Similarly, too large of a thickness uh, in that direction might be keeping your per unit cross sectional length and weight of the belt. So, a compromise between these two can be very easily made from your experience and the uh, availability. Okay. So, from where you can set these two values. So, this gives you a very uh, good way of designing or the selection. So, this is a mixture of how you do the design means uh, as a matter of fact and the selection. So, here design part is not very much it is a selection basically. Okay. So, once you find out the typical cross section of the bells etcetera that is all right. I think one part uh, I, uh, I just wanted to tell you uh, that in this particular expression uh, while you are be deriving the value of alpha you have already chosen the center distance is not it. So, once you have chosen the center distance and which is fixed the pulley diameters already you have calculated. Now, it will be very easy for you to calculate what should be the total length of the belt because in the very first lecture already you have seen the formula for the total belt length requirement is given over there. So, uh, in this particular case what is happening that uh, we have assumed the belt drive to be an open one is not it because we have taken a smaller pulley diameter and a large pulley diameter like that had it been a cross bail drive then of course, those beta parameters or alpha parameters would have been the same basically we require the alpha parameter. Anyway that is not preventing you uh, uh, or that do not ch make any change in the design procedure whichever the type of bail drive you choose it is both suitable uh, for either a cross bail drive or a open bail drive. Now, this is the idea by which you consider the design of the uh, design the selection of the flat belts. So, this is uh, the next slide which again is a repetition of what I have already told you uh, that means, what we understand is this one that already we have computed the area of belt cross section that is already over. Okay. I have just told you belt width thickness and number of ply is obtained from belt specification table. So, that is where one should iterate okay, that which could be a best combination to suit a situation. Now, the last one what requires little bit of uh, uh, this discussion which we have not done yet is a calculated belt length which is normally kept 1 percent short for correct initial tension. Now, in this particular case what is happening that you know the role of initial tension in power transmission that we have already discussed. So, you can go on increasing the initial tension till a limit what happens that T 1 could be maximum and T 2 may be coming out to be 0. Uh, however, that is not done 
in that uh, that uh, in that manner but anyway uh, this is an possibility also that means you have to one has to introduce a good amount of initial tension again just to repeat that initial tension will dictate that what should be the bearing loads onto the shaft and thereby the bearing designs and other things are also uh, dependent on this particular initial tension. Now normally uh, what should be the optimum in it initial tension instead of calculating in actual practice what is being done the exactly belt length you have taken up and calculated and selected then what you do from your calculated value of the belt length make the belt length roughly it is a just and guideline that you make it 1 percent short all right. Now this 1 percent short is not always true it depends depending upon number of plies also. Well what I am giving you are just an indicative value and if you make it 1 percent short and then make it the joint where you should take care once again I am telling you the joint should be very carefully taken care of otherwise noise will come and belt might snap uh, gi without giving you any notice. Then uh, coming back to the thing what I was just telling that this 1 percent shorter belt length will automatically create an initial tension which for all practical purpose this has been found to be quite quite uh, you know uh, quite optimum in nature. So this is the idea you design everything is over cut a belt length but while cutting you take some amount small what is that small amount small roughly around 1 percent length you take smaller and just join it and put it onto the drive. So that solves your problem. So this is the idea by which one can go for the selection of the falcon. Now you know that uh, another very very important and widely used bale drive is a V bale drive. Now we will going to discuss about some aspects of the V belt drive. Now you can see this slide on the V belt drive. Here you please uh, look to this figure this is actually what is shown here a V belt drive means you know the look is something like an V had we completed the entire situation ok. Now this is the wedge angle ok. And of course you understand the pulley should be something like this to conform the V belt. Here I think I give you an idea that the pulley the belt should not go entirely inside the pulley but it will be something like this. This is a best way of designing some portions will be like this ok. So the, within the pulley the particular V belt is situated. Now here the nomenclature of the V belt stands like this as it is given it is thickness this is the top weight and you do have a neutral axis. What is a neutral axis that means when you are bending the belt where the bending of the belt will take place because the bending of the belt will take place whenever it is just passing over a pulley. So in that case a zone will come which we are defining here as a neutral axis where there will be no stress and other sides one side it will be compressive stress and other side it will be tensile stress. Now this particular distance what we call as a pitch line this is the pitch line okay so which is going passing through the neutral axis is pitch line and 
and this obviously will be the inside line. So, that means, if you are having an bell drive through which a V belt, I am just giving an exaggerated view all right, V belt is going. So, we have something like this as a pitch line and this one is an inside line. Okay. So, this is an inside line and this is the pitch line. So, these two parameters are very important because of the fact that while calculating or, or while using the equations of bell drive, then uh, whatever the diameters or the uh, I mean uh, I mean to say the pulley diameter or the belt length L, all what we compute are based on this pitch line. Means what is the values you are getting or using are all pitch line values. So, if you want to come down to the uh, inside line, then appropriately you have to uh, do some subtractions, some value subtractions to come down to the inside line. Okay. So, this is the cross section of a pulley, I am sorry, V belt cross section as it is given in this figure. And next, what we will see that normally these are the V belt specifications. What are the V belt specifications we understand? Now, here I would like to say one thing that these particular cross sections are normally available in the terms of A, B, C, D and a little higher side also E that I have not included over here. So, let us consider as the situation to be A, B, C and D. Of course, we do have something like E section also. Now, A section means of course, a thinner cross section, I mean a, a smaller cross section that you can understand. 13 is the width and 8 is the thickness in millimeter and D on the other hand you can see 32 is the width and 19 is the thickness. So, obviously, the for given the material of the belts being same, the D section has got a larger power transmission capacity. This D section has a larger compare, I mean power transmission capacity compared to an A section belt. So, that is the reason you can see the kilowatt range. So, if you are going to transmit anything within 5, you go for A section. If you are going to transmit something uh, within this C zone say uh, 10 or 15 or 20, then you go for the C section. Now, if you are going to transmit something around uh, this particular value, you can see although you can go for 2 over here, but sometimes the 2 means it is going towards uh, this side of the A section belt. So, normally people can go means this is an overlapping zone either you can choose A or you can choose B. So, some amount of overlapping zones will be always there. However, one should concentrate in this way that somewhere in the mid zone or like that is a better way. Because you can see uh, for a given power transmission of a very large, uh, can we not do with a belt A? Of course, you can do with the belt A. Suppose you require just an example, you require two sections of D belt, two, uh, two numbers of D belt, D section belt, then what will be the number of A section belts? It will be 2, it will be, it may be 10, it may be 12 or something like that without calculation it is very difficult to say, but something around this way looking at the horsepower, I mean kilowatt capacity range, one can understand that if you are using an A section belts, then you have to use more number of belts compared to a D or C uh, belt cross sections. Okay. In this case, what will happen? The situation is that you require a pulley with more number of groups, thereby the pulley becomes heavy and it becomes costly, it becomes it, it actually creating a more load onto the, the self weight of the pulley itself will cause a more load onto the shafts. Okay. So, thereby uh, the choice 
of the belt section whether it should be A, B, C or D depends uh, on the uh, on the situation of power transmissions. However, a brief guideline is as given in this particular slide. So, once again if we look into this one then you find that in the belt specification some other things are also also mentioned that is a minimum pulley diameter is 75 mm, 125, 200 and 355. Means what is happening basically you know that uh, when it is passing over a pulley it has to bend a lot is not it. Now these V belts uh, or uh, these V belts having a different thicknesses. So, if it is going for a very small pulley this 90 mm thickness then the belts are to be bended, belts are to be bent in a very great extent. Okay. So, thereby it will cause a huge amount of stress in these areas, okay. the bending stresses will be more. So, obviously depending upon the situation one has to look for what? One has to look for that what should be this minimum pulley diameter, this pulley is becomes a guiding factor as because a section belt has got a lesser thickness is minimum pulley diameter is 75 and in the same logic the D can be going to as high as 350 mm pulley diameter. So, uh, in, in this particular case one is warned of the situation that uh, use of minimum pulley diameter is always recommended while going for V belt drive designs. Okay. So, in this one or the belt specifications table I think everything is quite clear that means you know that how what are the type of belt sections A, B, C and D how it is designated depending upon the power transmission capacity and we do have a belt section E also. But it is not being specified over here because those are for the very high capacity. And another important factor is that looking at the flexing of the belt, this word is used very much flexing means how much you are bending. Okay. So, how much the flexural strength is getting changing means that is a flexural strength you have learnt earlier that means it is plus minus plus minus. Okay. So, these repeated stress situations also are taken care of. Okay. Um, while considering the belt design in terms of certain factors that we will be looking very shortly. So, this is another important thing that means how you designate a V belt. That means, the belt or the V belt we always talked about the pitch line, this is pitch line and this is inside line. Okay. So, obviously, this belt when we are considering, so it will have a pitch line length and it will have a inside length which is shorter obviously, the inside length is shorter. Now, while just drawing this figure one important thing came into the, my mind is that these V belts do not have any joints. These are continuous belts and uh, what is happening that uh, these particular belts are manufactured without joints. So, that means what is happening that certain standard lengths of the belts are only available. Uh, you cannot have the belts of length of your choice, you have to you have to just select whichever the belt is very close to your situation. So, uh, while designating a belt the interesting fact is that it is never designated with respect to pitch length, but it is designated with respect to nominal inside length. 
Suppose after calculation you say have selected at B section belt depending upon the power transmission and you computed that the belt length is 1016 mm. Then or something else and in the catalog you find that 1016 mm is the closest to your calculated length. Then you have to choose this 1016 mm belt and you have to designate this B1016 oblique 40. This is in millimeter in the same data book you will be finding out the another value is given in inch also. So, this is the designation of a V belt B1016 by 40. Now, what we find out the relationship between inside length plus x will give you the pitch length. So, what is that one? That if you have as that's just refer to this figure. So, this inside length plus some length will give you pitch length. So, this x what is the value of x in millimeter if it is a section 36, b section 43, c section 56 and d section 79. Well, uh, with this uh, designation of V belt. Uh, I think uh, we uh, stop here for today, we will continue our lecture in the next class. Thank you. Good day, we continue our discussion on the uh, bail drives. So, today's lecture is lecture number 32 and uh, You see just a quick recapitulation what we have done in the last class. So, this is for the V belt drive and you know that the V belt specifications are as given over here. So, there are four type of sections mainly also, also I told you that there is also an E section present. So, depending upon the kilowatt range one has to select the typical uh, belt for the use. Next one <coughs> that we just talked about that the designation of V belt how we uh, consider this. So, uh, what happens that if we have a belt length something like this then we, we know that this is the inside length and this is the pitch length. So, by the formula etcetera what we have learnt earlier we can determine the pitch length where by use of this chart we have to find out that inside length. And this inside length whatever has been computed should be chosen as a nearest that is available.